Hi, I'm Karen Gwip, a medical geneticist and pediatrician at the New Moors Children's Hospital in Wilmington, Delaware. I'm also the Chief Medical Officer for FDNA, and I will talk to you today about the use of artificial intelligence tools in the medical genetics and pediatrics clinics. Phase 2 Gene is an app that uses AI tools, and this app is available to medical geneticists worldwide. It is HIPAA as well as EU data compliant. And medical geneticists have used this tool for years successfully. The phase 2 gene technology uses deep convolutional neural network in, in order to analyze facial features. And shown here is a very simplified diagram. A photograph is taken and the tool places landmarks over the face as is shown there. Then the face is divided in predefined regions. Each of these regions is then analyzed and the abstracted data are then compared to abstracted data from syndromic conditions, which the phase 2 gene tool has previously been trained on. The output then is a ranked list of syndromic conditions with the top one spot for the syndrome that most closely matches the abstracted data of the facial photograph. And this is the technology that has been available for a while now. Today, I'm excited to tell you about a different use of phase 2 gene that can apply to pediatricians. And this new algorithm for pediatricians allows pediatricians and other specialists to take a photograph of an individual who, for example, comes with a concern for developmental delay and to get a quick assessment about the likelihood that the patient might have a genetic condition and would benefit from a genetics referral. So what the pediatrician would do is they would take a picture and they would get an output that's a scoring that gives you a relative likelihood of benefiting from a genetics referral. And this is a tool that we've now started to use in our institution and the patients who rank high for the developmental pediatrician using this tool can then be flagged for a more efficient referral to medical genetics. So here is an example of four photographs of children in this pediatrician view tool is directed towards pediatric patients. So this is the age range that it works best in. When you look at these images, you might think, which ones of these would you refer to the medical geneticist if there were concerns? And when we look at the pediatrician view, we see that the third patient from the left is the one who scores on the high likelihood for potentially having a genetic condition, whereas the other individuals score lower. Now, not all of these patients have had a full genetic testing set, but Many years later, after these pictures were taken, this is the current final diagnosis for each of these individuals. So you see that the patient third from the left has been diagnosed with smith lemniopet syndrome, whereas the other individuals do not have a specific genetic condition. So this is an example of how these tools, this tool could flag a patient for a more efficient referral to medical genetics. For the pediatrician using this tool on a handheld device, this is what it looks like. They take a picture, it takes a moment for this picture to be analyzed, and then the output is this bar system scoring that shows you how likely the patient is to have a specific genetic condition explaining concerns in this patient. And the pediatrician can set up the app in such a way that with a click of a button, they could refer this patient to their preferred genetics provider. Here's a different example of a picture of Shirley Temple, and this image scores low in the assessment, which is good, so that she doesn't need a referral to a medical geneticist. This technology was assessed, and recently Mensa et al. presented the data at the European Society of Human Genetics meeting, 
And they found that this pediatrician view technology has a high sensitivity and specificity in flagging those patients who might have a genetic condition and therefore allow for a more efficient referral for full genetics evaluation. Now, let's return to the use of the Fiesta gene tool in the medical genetics clinic. And I know that many of you are familiar with this tool and use it to input facial photographs as well as additional findings in the patients. When you have a patient and you make a diagnosis in the patient, you can mark that in the way shown here. Particularly important are the molecularly diagnosed patients because the abstracted data from these images, not the images itself, but the abstracted data, as I've shown you earlier, can be used for future reiterations of the Fiesta gene tool. So we run ongoing training sessions where syndromes are being tested and the newly molecular diagnosed images can participate in these training sessions. This allows us to potentially add new syndromic conditions to those that the phase 2 gene app can identify. And after each training run, these results are evaluated for validity and new syndromes have to pass a statistical threshold before they are added to this algorithm. In version 22.3.0, 360 syndromes were included in the app. So these were the syndromes that could have been matched to a patient's facial features. And that's great. However, the system still has obvious limitations. For example, the fact that a syndrome needs to be included in the training and needs to be included successfully in the training to be available for matching. And in order to be successfully included, a number of images from different patients have to be available. And that can be very difficult for either newly described syndromes or for ultra rare syndromes where there are only a handful of patients worldwide. So for these reasons, I'm particularly excited to talk to you today about a newly available algorithm that's also incorporated into to gene. The particularly exciting news about this new algorithm is that rather than matching the abstracted data from a patient's photo to syndrome groups that the system has been trained on, now the system can match the abstracted data from one patient to abstracted data from other single images. So that's the critical difference. Here the match is to other single images. And you can see here on this slide that when you go to the desktop version of the phase 2 gene tool, you now have an ultra rare tab that you can click on if you want to access this new tool. Here's an example of how well this tool works. This here is an example from a publication that's now available. Marbach et al. is shown there. Two patients unrelated to each other presented with a number of findings that they shared, including mandibular hypoplasia, dental abnormalities, microcephaly, generalized lipoatrophy, and both had intention tremor. In phase two gene, each of these images matched highly to progeria. And that makes sense because their facial features and the history of lipoatrophy certainly matches Hutchins and Guilford progeria. However, neither individual showed a variant in LMNA. In contrast, both individuals showed de novo variants in LEMD2, a newly identified disease candidate gene. And in addition to a number of functional studies that were performed to prove that this is indeed disease causing for these patients, Marbach et al. were able to use these two images in combination with hundreds of images from patients diagnosed with other genetic syndromic conditions. And using this new tool that's now available for phase 2 gene, 
they showed that, as you can see on the right hand diagram, that the images of these two patients were much more similar to each other compared to most of the other syndromic conditions on a pairwise comparison. So this shows you how powerful this image to image comparison tool can be. And this hopefully will allow you in the future to use this technology in phase two gene to match undiagnosed patients. Mm. Similarly to what gene matcher does on a gene basis, here you could match based on the facial features. So let me show you what this could look like in clinic. Here, shown here is a photograph of a patient of mine. And when we use the rare tab that gives you the typical ranking of syndromic conditions, we do not find a syndrome that fits her very nicely. So now we can go to the ultra rare tab or ultimately to the undiagnosed tab. When we look in the ultra rare tab, here her facial photograph is matched to facial photographs of patients who either have been diagnosed with a syndrome that's not currently fully available in the rare analysis, or it could match to single individuals who have a specific diagnosis. And when we look at the Zimmermann-Laban syndrome tab here, we see that four patients are included and that this matches fairly highly to our patient's features. Now, when we look at that card and click on it, we find that one of the patients in this category is very similar to our patient. And in fact, we can see this photograph because it is an image that I myself have previously placed in here. This is an old image of the same patient. So here she successfully matched to herself, again, proving that this technology works well. Now, let me show you one additional tool that's available here. It's a graphical view. In the graphical view, the data that you were able to see under the rare tab when you match to syndromes, as well as here in the ultra rare where you match to individual patients, is shown a little bit differently. So it's the same data set, but shown differently. Here, the patient matches that take place in a multidimensional space are shown on a 2D visualization, as you see on the right, where each individual patient is represented by a dot. The gray dot is our patient as indicated. The other dots represent other patients and their relative distance to the patient in question shows how closely the facial images match. And the different colors represent different molecular diagnoses. So this is a different way of showing findings that are also shown under the rare and ultra rare categories. Now let's assume we still don't have a match for our patient and we move on to the last tab, the undiagnosed tab. Mm -hmm. And here our patient's image is matched to other single patient images that also remain undiagnosed. And if you want your own patient to be a, to participate in future analysis by other clinicians, you click on this little box there, match my patient. If you look at your patient and you find a different individual shown that matches closely and you like the features that are listed, you think that might be truly a match to your own undiagnosed patient and you want to get more information about this other patient that matches yours, you can click on the contact clinician line and input your own information then submit this. And this will be sent as an email to the other clinician so that that person can respond to you and you can connect based on your patient's facial features. Again, pretty similar to the technology in GeneMatcher. One additional capability that's now available is this listing of genes. In the rare view, you see the genes that correspond to the syndromic conditions that are shown on that page. And when you go to the ultra rare tab on the right, again, you see listed the genes that most closely correspond to the syndromes of patients represented there. 
if, for example, you have an exome report and there's a VUS and a gene, and you want to quickly review if the potential findings seen with variants in that gene match your patient, you can also input the name of the gene in the box indicated there. And then the syndromic conditions that are correlated to that gene will be highlighted beneath it. So this is another way how you can quickly review the phenotype that is associated with variant in certain genes. Now let me show you one additional example of how these AI tools that are available through phase 2 gene can be used successfully in order to confirm potential genetic diagnoses. This is an example provided by Dr. Homancho Girl from Australia. He saw a 26-year-old male who had a long-standing history of developmental delay and autism. He was living in a sheltered facility, and this individual was thinking about having a family, and he asked about potential risks to his future offspring. Dr. Gore was able to perform a microarray and found a duplication of 17Q21.31. And in phase 2 gene, this is a very rare condition, so this is not a syndrome that the phase 2 gene tool has currently been trained on. However, using the ultra-rare tab and inputting this patient's facial photograph, the facial photograph was then matched very highly to images from two other patients with a 17Q21.31 duplication syndrome. So this quickly confirmed to Dr. Girl that this is likely the underlying cause for this patient's developmental differences. And then he was able to provide the patient with the appropriate counseling. So this is an example of how these AI tools can help you make diagnoses or confirm diagnoses in the context of molecular information that is available to you. So today I've told you about a new algorithm that is particularly suitable for pediatricians and other specialists to be used in the pediatric setting in order to identify those individuals that most likely would benefit from a referral to a medical geneticist. And I've also shown you newly available algorithms particularly the one that's built on a single image to single image comparison analysis that might help you make diagnoses in your patients. If you would like additional information, please don't hesitate to contact FDNA for help. And you can review the publications on the website as shown here. So thank you for your time and interest. I appreciate it.